Uh, okay, so for the recording for this session, we will be recording this session for those who can't make it or for you to rewatch this later. Recordings will be available for up to 30 days from when put up. We are pinning the video so that only the presenters, the panelists, will be recorded. This means you can choose to keep your video and audio on or off. If you speak, the recording will pick your audio and not your name. You can type your questions in the chat box uh, if you prefer, and depending on the presenters, you could private message them as well. Uh, please keep your audio on mute whenever you're not speaking, otherwise we might pick up your background noise. We encourage you to check out our Sugar and Spice Facebook group for latest updates and announcements. Um, regarding consent, please do not contact other participants outside of the festival without their consent. You can always ask them for permission through the festival or Facebook group before messaging them. We do not want uh, instances of participants feeling violated or unsafe. Uh, we do have some emotional support. Uh, just email us at emotional support at sugarandspice.asia. Okay, so that's for housekeeping. And um, so we'll have Joyan, our moderator for this session. Uh, Joyan is a perform performance style dominatrix specializing in rope bondage and BDSM performances. And is also the Philippines first homegrown international burlesque performer. She is an alternative model and avant grande performer specializing in artful soft porn, fetish, erotic, vintage burlesque, and pinup, sexy heels, and striptease. She is currently training as a slutty ballerina, exotic pole dancer, and silks aerialist, and is developing aerial bondage, a discipline that combines aerial circus concepts with Japanese rope bondage. On the side, she performs as a rock vocalist and a fine art photographer. Her work is primarily based in Manila, Philippines. Okay, so Joanne, you can take the reins. Thank you. Thank you so much for that um, very informative description, Fiona. Thank you. And of course, it's my honor to be part of Sugar and Spice since the very beginning. So thank you to the team. And thank you very much, Dr. Martha, of course. So we're here to moderate the GLBT IQIA panel with some of you know, the most amazing people that I've had the pleasure of um, meeting these past few uh, weeks. And we'll start off with Sherry. Sherry, as you can see, she's um, spotlighted below. Um, she's a Malay Muslim, transgender, sex worker, and human rights defender. And she now bridges the community with access to justice, okay? Sexual health, testing information, and all forms of assistance while they're in the sex industry. Because the Lord knows we need so much of that, right? Especially now. Okay, she is known as the voice in the face of sex workers, and she is the representative of the Asia Pacific for the global network of sex work projects. Sherry, we're very happy to have you here. Could you tell us a little about, uh, about yourself? What do you identify as and could you physically describe yourself for our, uh, pan for our panel audience? Uh, how do I describe myself? I think the normal she, her, but you know, I wouldn't want to say I'm a goddess amongst all, but yeah, that's the, the preferred pronouns and what else? Uh, what else was it? I think I... I Forget the last question. What do you identify as? Identify as a uh, Malay Muslim transgender sex worker. Yes, yeah, and nothing, nothing special. I mean, people in Singapore, among my community, they will look very highly of me and all. But yeah, I'm just doing what I can for my community because everyone can save today and the world together. Thank you, Sherry. Now she speaks very humbly for someone who is standing up for our community. <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> okay, so next up we have Yuen. Okay, Yuen is a sex positive, polyamorous, and kinky bisexual who encourages open conversations around relationships, sex, and sexuality. Right here in Sugar and Spice, where she actually started as a guest. Okay, and until until the guests themselves and the organizers realize that she has a wealth of knowledge and she deserves to be here on the panel to share stories um, from, you know, honestly, an 
honest individual's perspective. Okay, so Yuan, can you please physically describe yourself? Oh, thank you, Joan. Uh, that was that was too kind of you. Um, hi, my name is Yuan. Um, for those who cannot see me, I am Asian. I have slightly tanned skin. Uh, I have long hair that I tie uh, in a ponytail sometimes. Uh, and I have what they call an undercut, which is um, parts of my hair at the side and the back are shaved uh, off. Uh, I have a pudgy nose and a kinda, I'm kind of chubby. So if you cannot see me, that's what I look like. Um, I identify as bisexual at the moment. I think along the, homos, uh, the, the sexuality spectrum, I would identify closest with being bisexual. Yeah, and I'm also on the committee of Sugar and Spice. <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much, you and here to represent, you know, represent the average person's point of view, which is something that we need as well, right? And then the next one in our panel is my friend, my good friend. And this is a mouthful, okay? So the, the star or is your quintessentially eccentric intergalactic performer from planet Hoop Villa, exploding light and energy with every performance. The star or she's one of the core members of Burlesque PH, the, per, the premier burlesque group in our country, the Philippines. And she's also the mother tucker of Backlesque PH, the LGBT division of Burlesque PH. And you can find her on Live It as the star or Star, tell us about yourself. Well, hi, my name is the star or I'm from the Philippines and I'm also from the planet of Villa. Um, I identify myself as non-binary. Um, I do drag, I do circus arts, and I even do interior design. So I do a lot of artsy fartsy stuff. And um, I'm so happy to be here. And um, I feel able to, um, uh, if I'll be describing myself, I'll be describing something really weird, alien, um, out of this world. Um, can see me performing without eyebrows, um, different kinds of hair. I don't do black hair. I do play with lots of colors. I put blue lipstick. I put gray lipstick. I, I put a lot of um, artsy on my face. And I try to be as authentic as myself. See, guys, she is out of this world, and we can't wait to hear more about your planet, girl. Thank you so much. And last but definitely not the least is Joshua Simon. And Joshua has used his voice and talent in more ways than one. He is known for pioneering the SG voice, and this is a podcast to create a platform for gay stories in Singapore, which is, am I right, illegal as we, we talked about, so more on that later. Um, also, he is an independent singer-songwriter whose debut album, Filthy, was hailed as one of the best albums to come out of Singapore, guys. Okay, That's by Bandwagon Asia. He is also a radio presenter who was interviewed with some of the world's biggest stars, and he's got millions and millions of views on YouTube. Joshua, please tell us a bit about yourself. Well, um, hey everyone, uh, my name is Joshua Simon. I use he, him pronouns. I identify as a cisgendered gay man. Um, I am wearing this blue um, blue shirt that I actually got from Hongdae in Seoul. I was just walking uh, there on the street one day and there was this girl who was selling her art projects. So I think she went to fashion school there and she was like working on a whole bunch of different things. And I got this for like five dollars. So it, it, it feels it's one of my favorite, favorite shirts because it, it's it's its own identity. It's there's only one piece of it and it was only five dollars. So I, I, I really like that. I think, I think it's I, I always thought that uh, to get one of a kind pieces, you have to pay like hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm just wearing that right now. It's nice and cozy, comfy. Thank you for that. Art doesn't have to be expensive to be beautiful, right? Oh. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Okay, now let's jump right into it. Um, ladies and gentlemen and whatever you identify as in the audience tonight, we're going to figure just what that means, okay? So this panel is entitled the GLBTIQIA panel 
What does that mean? Okay, can I ask uh, my panelists to maybe describe one of those letters, define one of those letters that you don't identify as, so we can, you know, figure it out. Can we can start with Joshua? Pick a letter, and then let's talk about that. Um, I, I'm. I mean, just looking at LGBTQ plus, even just just those alphabets. I, it's it's incredible because I think for a long time growing up with the lack of education about what you're feeling and um, if there's anyone else like you uh, to know that there are other people like me and also other people who are not like me who are very very different and I have not heard about them I've not heard about what life is like for them even pronouns we didn't have this conversation in our community in the past couple of years until until the past, the past couple of years, right? So we have been taking the cues from the West and it's not that these are things that are completely um, hard for us to understand or grasp. Uh, these are things that we have always felt. We just haven't put words to it. We haven't decided as a community, okay, we're gonna make things so much easier when you struggle with what pronouns to use or what you identify with to have this conversation. It wasn't until recently. So everything is a work in progress. I feel um, everyone is sharing their stories bit by bit every single day. Um, now that the world is opening up, um, now that the platform and power of the platform has switched hands. Um, I did an interview yesterday talking about the podcast that I host uh, with a German publication. And I shared to him that 10 years ago when I was in film school, you have to earn the right to have a microphone in front of you. You have to audition for something. Um, you, in order for you to consider yourself a singer, someone has to allow you a stage. Whereas these days we create the stage, we buy the microphone, we set it up, we run the show um, and we tell our stories and we also learn how to manage and take responsibility for the platforms that we then have and the audience that come to us. So I think we're all figuring things out. For a long time, I, I uh, identified as bisexual. Um, I did like girls, but I also question how much of that was because I just wanted to be like one of the boys. Um, and it was one of those things where even though I liked the girl in class, why did I like that one girl that all the guys liked? Was it because I just wanted to fit in with everyone else because I wanted to be ahead of the pack? Um, and, and I just wanted to have friends and I wanted to be accepted. So I think over time, um, the B has changed to G and I feel very much comfortable now. Um, and like when I close my eyes and think of who I wanna be with, it's, it's a man. I don't know who, I don't know what skin color, I don't know where he's from. Uh, I don't know how long we've, we've dated, but th that is very true to me. And, and because I've come to terms with that, I have no shame whatsoever with that. And with the podcast that I have right now, even though it's a, it's a gay podcast, I want to learn all the other things that I have not been exposed to. Even, the, even drag queens, for example, I don't know if I'm taking too long on this and please feel free to cut me off if I am. Um, but even for drag queens, we I hear a lot of um, gay people even who don't want to watch RuPaul's Drag Race because it's not for them. It's too flamboyant, it's too girly and all that. Even though they're gay, you would think they'd be the first one and most receptive to that. Um, and for me, even I remember saying that. I remember telling my friends for the longest time that I'm not interested in RuPaul's Drag Race. I don't have anything to do with that, it's not me. And then I actually started watching and then I started empathizing. I started feeling these things that I never realized about myself. And now I, I not only evangelized the show, I'm very protective of the show. Same thing for Pose. I knew very little about trans people. And then just watching one show, just watching one show completely changed my mind and perception of things. And now I, I wanna actively look for these things. So I think the perception is that even though I'm a gay person and I'm part of the LGBT community, I, I can't say, I can't, I can't speak for everyone else because I know so little, because so much of my life I have been told so little. So much of my life has been filled with shame where if someone is transgender, I also don't wanna go near them. If someone's lesbian, I also don't wanna go near them because I know what it's like to be left behind or, or tossed aside. So you wanna immediately disassociate with your own people. So I'm, I'm at that point right now in my life where I am empathizing, I'm learning, I'm putting myself out there. I'm, I'm saying every, everyone's got a seat at this table and I'm hoping to create those seats as well for other people with this podcast that I host. That's actually really relevant right now because my, my next question was going to be like, is 
is it true that the rainbow family is one big happy family and apparently it's not there's so little things that we know about one another and you know right now it's all about creating these things that were weren't there in the first place for us yeah. before yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i think i think that um there was a comment that i got um a couple of weeks ago um on our podcast on our instagram and it was someone who said that i listen to the podcast every day um i like the show um but can you speak about how alienating it feels in the gay community to be gay because the first thing you do as a gay person at least in singapore is we go to this club or the bar taboo tantric those are the places that is supposedly for us with the pride flag this is where i'm supposed to be accepted this is my lighthouse and then you go there and then no one wants to sit with you um, no one is inviting you to to their table and then you go on Tinder or Grindr, you want to look for a conversation, people find you ugly, and then you realize I have to look a certain way to be appreciated it, within my community. Being gay is not enough. I need to look a certain type of gay. And, and even the term SG boys, when, when we decided to title it the SG boys, uh, for the longest time, uh, the SG boys had different iterations. The first iteration was in the early 2000s, it was a website pre Grindr um, where people would meet other gay men and meet other people like them and be able to say like, hey, I saw this guy on the train and if this is you, can you please message me back, write me an email. And then it became a hashtag that people would use as a little tongue in cheek wink, like, hey, I'm gay, by the way. So if you click on the SG Boys hashtag on Instagram, you also see a lot of shirtless guys that look a certain way, the body built is a certain way, they pose a certain way. And I felt like I could never be SG boy. And I thought that was kind of silly because just like PH for the Philippines, SG is, is our country's, like it's, it's, our, it's our initials, right? So yeah. it's Singapore boys. So I, I wanted to expand that as well. Um, the, the perception is that we go into the club, we go into this community thinking everyone's gonna embrace you. Even at Pink Dot, which is our annual, um, pride but also protests um uh, at Honglin park where we protest 377a uh, it's it's a, a section in in our, our law books that uh, criminalizes sex between men in singapore um and and there are many trickle down effects of that one law itself uh, from there that also becomes uh, there's also then a media blackout because anything to do with lgbtq content is deemed restricted and since TV is public and free to air, you cannot have content like that on. You cannot have radio stuff on, magazines, newspapers. Uh, when Love, Simon came out a couple of years ago, which is a PG-13 film in the US, it was rated R21, which is the same level as, I don't know, Saw? So, um, so like it, it was, it was it's, it's been a bit bizarre. Um, but the point I wanna make is that even going to a pink dot where you have thousands of people like you, I've, many years I, I've gone in there and felt really alone and really lonely. And it's tougher when you see your own people that you're supposed to feel at home with, feel that rejection, that's even more painful. But I'm not here to knock anyone. I'm here to try to understand why that is so. I think that um, just really, quick, I don't wanna take it too much time. Um, <laughs> I, I think we need to remember that um, especially when you're in a country where you don't have your rights. And this was a study by Advocate Magazine in 2015 that um, the life expectancy of a gay person drops by I think seven years, I think. I Don't quote me exactly, but there was this study that the life expectancy of a gay person um, in a country where they don't have their rights drops drastically. Um, the, 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 the tendency to, to uh, develop loneliness, rejection, um, anxiety, depression, eventually suicidal ideation from feeling other from society, right? Um, and um, I, I look at it as we need to remember when you're in a society like that, you're dealing with a lot of unresolved hurt in the community. It's hurt people who then hurt people. People who have been bullied now become bullies. Um, just like why I gave the example earlier, I know what it's like to feel left out and be the weird one. So when I see someone else who's weirder, 
I don't want to have anything to do with them. So I pick on them. And that's why you have masculine picking on feminine. That's why you almost have like drag queens and trans people being all the way at the bottom and then uh, gay people all the way up just because the conversation is, is there and it's easy to be popular right now. And that's where we're at. So we have a lot of unresolved hurt being just passed around in the gay community. And no one is there to actually put their foot down because we don't have guidance. And when we look for guidance, we look to the government because that's what we've been doing. But when we can't count on the government who do we have so that's why little organizations like ping dots very important prout is very important because we sort of try to set the standard of how things can be it's very interesting because um the three of you are from singapore but then you all seem to be coming from different uh different uh parts of the spectrum as we expected as we expected right um, how about you sherry um can you tell us something about uh, something about yourself as a transgender person, Mali, even in Singapore, is it? Does it confirm what Joshua is saying? I would say I would say yes, and and yeah, tapping on what uh, Joshua was saying, unresolved. You see, so I want to tap back again on the alphabets of GLBTQIA. It's unresolved about what does queer really means, what does lesbian, bi, trans, intersex, asexual really means. You see, because. As of now, I really felt overwhelmed by all this alphabet initially started by LGBT. And now we have the Q, we have the I, we have the A, we have the so on, you see. So it's getting getting more and com more confusing, not just for me, and I believe it's for the the, the uh heterosexual people as well. So the unreserved about who these people really are is still confusing for those anti allies or even the heterosexual, and it's making it harder for them to really accept us or welcome us to the community you see because they don't know who the hell are these people so i always believe that when we talk about glbtqia the issues the challenges and and why we fight for certain things we have to be really considerate on how we present it is it understandable for for those who are completely unaware of it or is it too much because we i mean all the panelists here i believe would understand when i say that we are responsible for whatever we say to the public because if you're just going to blast out, you're going to shoot this, you're going to shoot that without telling them where we come from, how they started, it's going to be too much for people to understand. And even I myself now, I learned the term of transgender when I was 20. I would say a bit too late for, for a trans woman to really know the term, but because back then, there isn't much of a, a Google or Yahoo, you know, to search, oh, why am I feeling this way? So I learned it the harder way by going through a national service, by thinking that, oh, I'm gay, I'm feminine, what do I really feel? And knowing that people of, of the same community as me, the trans woman, they initially found out way before than me, I realized that, oh, it's because there isn't much resource for me back then to really know why am I feeling this way, what's the answer to it. So now I wouldn't want the youth out there to be questioning and then struggling on their own to find answers. So here I am uh, strongly wanting to, to explain to people, the youth, the questioning one, what does it mean to be GLBTQIA and for those who want to be an ally or anything. I'm always here to answer those questions as much as I can based on my experience and what I've heard. Thank you. That's wonderful. Basically, be the person that you needed when you were younger, right? It's all about that, creating uh, these new idols, these new leaders, these new pioneers even. How about you and who represents the honest individual, you know, who's just here. Because a lot of the personalities in the panel are pretty strong and, and, and pioneering, but I'm interested to hear you. And what is what is a day in, in your life like? Um, it, it, does, it, does it intersect with some of Sherry's and Joshua's experiences? Is it different in any way? Um, I think Joshua's able to look at it from a, like a national point of view and, and maybe Sherry is able to look at it as an uh, from an educator educator point of view. Um, for me, I really sort of blend in. Um, so I think we spoke about this before. Um, perhaps some some lesbian or gay uh, people who identify as lesbian or gay feel that uh, people who are bisexuals uh, have it easy from in uh, in day to day life, uh, and. And maybe it's true. I admit to hiding behind the, the heterosexual part of my bisexuality. Uh, so sometimes I tell white lies. 
sometimes I say I have a boyfriend and then uh, when I have to talk about my girlfriend, I just say my ex-partner um, because I don't feel like it's generally accepted in the workplace um, to be anything other than um, to identify with um, people who are hetero, like to be in a heteronormative relationship. Um, so, but, but I do, um, but I also feel like sexuality uh, on a certain level is really only important to me and, and not anyone else and what anyone else thinks. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm really here to um, help those who are questioning as well, um, that it doesn't have to be, um, you don't have to, uh, it's, there, is, there isn't an end goal. It's, uh, I feel like se exploring your sexuality is a journey. Uh, and for me, uh, when I was a teenager, I identified um, more strongly as a lesbian. Um, but over the years, um, I've been open to exploring how I feel about cisgendered men. Um, uh, so it has brought me thus far. And, and the thing is that um, some people with uh, conventional or traditional family backgrounds think that um, um, exploring your sexuality is really something for um, people in the art industry or, or hipsters or for young people. And I'm just here to say that um, it really is for everyone. It is your own journey of exploration. And that's very beautifully put, again, from an honest person's point of view. You don't have to have it fixed right away, right? And I actually uh, really appreciate you saying that, Ewan, because um, two people in the panel right now, myself and the star or, um, we, we go by perceived pronouns for just that. You know, can, can you talk about perceived pronouns, star? Um, I can be called he, she, it, they, whatever, as long as you call me. But it's more of um, accepting who you are on a personal level. It, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't matter if people will call you names. Um, being a, in our community, it's not going to be always rainbows and butterflies and happiness. It's, um, it's a continuous struggle. It's a continuous uh, learning and process. Um, when I was young, um, it's hard for me growing up. I studied in an all boys school. And then um, it's hard because I'm gay, I'm weird, and we're living in a third world country. So it's really, really um, challenging for me growing up that time because you have to find your place in this world. And by doing that, you have to really love yourself first and accept who you are. Embrace your inner self and never, never, I think never, never ask for permission to be yourself. That's the one lesson that I learned a lot. Um, people called me names and um, I, got, I got passed by them. I used to fight over them. But when, um, I think when I was uh, growing up uh, through the years, um, I just, um, don't mind them anymore. Um, it's more important for me that I am able to accept who, who I am as an individual rather than people will, I will look into people but they look at me or how do they perceive of me. So I think um, acceptance is uh, really, really the key for us, especially um, we're, we're part of the minority. Uh, we're we're going to struggle. We're going to keep fighting for it. It's because also, I think, um, of the situation that uh, the world grew up in a patriarchal um, system. So it's really hard for us to, to prove ourselves. But at the end of the day, um, I think that proving yourself to yourself is what matters and not to the other people who will just put you down. Can you give us any tips maybe on how, how specifically you were able to find that, that peace? Because I mean, as Asians, you know, we got a lot of issues. 
we got a lot of issues. Pa patriarchy is one thing, but like, you know, the unwritten um, rules of Asian society. How do you get over that star? As in, you seem to be very confident about it. How do we do that? Do you have any tips for us? Um, me, really long time just to be able to um to feel what i feel right now um it took it took a lot of effort and um understanding that um this is who i am as a uh, as an individual and then like what one one philosopher said rupaul that um as long as people don't put money on your table, pay them no mind. Oh my God, it's everyone in the Philippines. <laughs> you know what? Um, they're not paying your bills, pay them no mind. We always, um, we're always for, for ourselves first. We have to love ourselves first. And when once, one, once we learn who, who, are, who are we, in the inside it will just radiate from the outside that's true it's a it's a process and nobody can really tell like okay this is the moment that i'm gonna be okay right and i want to i want to speak more about that actually um specifically about our coming out stories like and anyone from the panelists can can volunteer i'm not gonna put you on the spot but we can start talking about our coming out stories in line with that, you know, reclaiming our truth. So, who wants to begin? Maybe I could, can go first. Oh, yeah. yeah, sure. <laughs> Actually, I didn't come out to my parents. It's like um, an open secret. You know, it's like a big elephant in the room. And I think also because of my generation gap with my parents, I was actually a menopausal baby my my mom gave birth to me when she was 47 already and she didn't have really proper education so growing up um they always tell me that when you're a menopausal baby it's either you're a special child or a super special child so i chose to be the super special child <laughs> and um, it's hard when growing up because, yeah, like what I said before, um, I grew up or studied in an all-boys school. So, you know, the, the situation there that um, really LGBT um, gay people are not allowed in the school. So they come to a point that our principal or our head um talk to our parents and it's um looking back um it's offending for us because i think um coming out is a personal thing nobody should ever tell you when to come out or when to come out or should come out because um, at the end of the day, it's not about i don't know why um, what are they gaining for when people are outing us out to our family, to our to our friends? Um, I don't still I don't understand the reason behind why are they doing that. But um, what I think is that it's a lack of respect um, for us since. Um, they are they feel threatened because they don't understand what we're going through so everything they find weird or they find it different they feel threatened because they don't understand the situation we are into so there um but eventually um in our high school days um we got support from other professors so they helped us also with dealing with those kinds of things. But I feel sad, actually, for other people who aren't that as strong as personality that they are bound to um, depression or they feel really guilty because um, they feel that it's wrong to be gay or uh, they don't feel that um, they, they shouldn't be like that. 
And um, I think the best advice that I could give to them is that um, I hope that you find your inner peace and your acceptance as who you are. And, and that's the, I think that is the gift of life, to be able to fully embrace who you are and be yourself because we only got one life to live. Wonderfully put, my love. Wonderfully put. That's. I'm glad that you found your peace, and I, I. I hope. I wish peace to everyone who who's here right now in this panel, whether as an audience or as a panelist. Thank you. How, how about the rest of you guys? How 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 was it for the rest of you guys? Um, I can share a couple of things. Um, I think I want to share a bit more from so sort of. The concept of coming out if i if i may share some insight um, go ahead yeah i i think with what star just mentioned right there um like a realization also kind of hit me which is the, the first thing that i thought of was i'm so much more than gay and and so much more than gay you're so much more than your sexuality and unfortunately so much of our lives have been reduced to that sort of denominator where we are just gay where we adjust our sexuality. Um, and I, I think the story of, of Star um, as, as a baby, I think was just absolutely beautiful uh, and, and truly, yeah, super special. And that's the thing that I've been trying to tell a lot of my friends um, with their sexual identity that, um, sorry, with their sexuality that, um, that you know, like you, you're, you're told to, to view your sexuality as a curse, as a taboo, as a mistake, as our parents' mistake, as all these things that we're told when we're young and then we never stop to, to think about maybe it's a gift as well, it really is. As, there are stereotypes for a reason as well. There's a reason why we're drawn to art, how other people just don't, uh, then are the other boys in the class. We're drawn to things and, and we see these colors and the little nuances of emotion that people are so afraid to. Um, at least for me, I, I was always, even before I understood sexuality, I was always drawn to female characters. I'm always in fighting games. I was always drawn to Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston before I knew about my sexuality, before I cared about boys or dating or whatever. There are all these things that were already part of those characteristics for just being able to be myself and not think about being masculine or listening to what other people wanted me to listen to. So that's the first point about how it can be viewed as a gift. Um, the, the point that I raised earlier about how we're so much more than our sexuality as well is that at the same time, our sexuality is very important because we have had so much shame with it. We've had so much shame with it that it then permeates the rest of our lives. So that's why coming out is important. That's why it's important for you to come out because it also helps someone else come out. The reason why we can even have these kind of panels and conversations because this is starting to happen more often now because these conversations are being had more. And that's why we're able to, to be able to do this without having a hush hush. The very fact that we can promote it on Instagram publicly and not feel afraid is because other people have done it too. And that took a lot of bravery on their part. So every little coming out story flows over to the next person's coming out story. So you are more than your sexuality, but also your sexuality is important because it's become such a big deal. Uh, the, the other thing about coming out, that point that I want to make is that, uh, and I don't know how much of you can relate to this, uh, how many of you can relate to this, but I feel like coming out is a never ending process, unfortunately. You come out one time and then you think you're done and you think I want to dance with somebody is going to play and then you're just going to jump around and that's it. You're always going to be gay and everyone's going to get the memo. Um, but no, you have to come out again and again. You have to explain your circumstances to someone else all the time, whether it be at work or to national service or to the person that you're dating. Um, you're constantly coming out. And another reason why is because when you come out, you have to explain what you're coming out with. You can come out as gay, right? So I can tell my parents, hey, I'm gay. But what is their perception and knowledge of gay? Is that they lived through the AIDS epidemic in the 80s and 90s, which means all gay men are going to get HIV, right? They lived through the idea of the media telling everyone that 
gay men are just extremely promiscuous beings because men are very promiscuous. So all of them are just gonna hump around and that's who we are and that's it. Or we're all gonna be really flamboyant or we're all gonna cross dress or we're gonna be drag queens. So the moment you come out, there is a level of, I need to explain what I'm even coming out as to you. So there's so many different levels and layers to coming out. And then there is the follow-up because the moment you come out to them, it's not up to them to view things a certain way, to get educated, to ask around, and then other people will have their perceptions put on them. So it's a tough process. So I can share my coming out story, but there are also all these other stories that then happen after you come out with different people. Um, it really is a journey. I think that's a, a beautiful way to put it, and I quite resonate with that, Joshua. It is indeed a journey. Um, you could come out to one crowd, and then they interpret it differently, and then the other crowd interprets it differently, and then maybe a couple of years from now. I, I, I am, I'm, for example, very fluid, so I kind of shift my preferences, and then I have to come out again to myself, to other people. I, that's a wonderful way to put it. Yeah, it doesn't always have to be one thing, which is, um, I guess, us Asians must learn. <laughs> it's not in any rule book, as much as we like to create rule books. How about you, Sherry? So what I get from from uh, what Star and Josh have been saying is about embracing yourself. Was it a mistake? Explaining, coming out. What I can I can narrow down from all this on my experience is that. It leads me to be responsible for all this. I'm responsible for educating my parents, my family. Oh, what does it mean to be trans? What's the difference between gay? And then, uh, like Jasa was saying, coming out would mean all my life coming out. And for me, I wouldn't really think so because I've stopped bothering or giving or give a, any heck on explaining to people, oh, I'm trans and this is what I do, this is what I like because I find it very 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 training and i realized that no i don't have to be explaining to people why i choose to be this way why i choose to be a sex worker why how do my family accept me because the story will never 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 ends instead of explaining to why i decided to be like this it, the focus should be what led me on what i have what i have high struggle on to come to where i am instead of the instead of asking the gist, you know, the stories of the, the, the soap stories. Oh, I'm pretty sure your mom must be sad, yada, yada, yada. I'm sick and tired of, of all those sad stories. What I want is that people should recognize, oh, she came out to be a, a sex positive person. Oh, she came out to be a drag queen. Oh, she's now uh, a gay man that's doing uh, his own podcast. People should recognize the talent upon coming out, but not about the soap stories about, oh, so how's the families like, you know? And I myself, I didn't even consider the, the consequences of coming up. How will it affect my family members? How will it look upon them? Because when I, when I come up to be a trans woman, I literally just, oh, I know what transgender woman means. So I'm going to dress up as a woman. And then I got into sexual industry and got into Project X, being an uh, activist. And then the rest is history because Oh, I just came out to the to, to to media, the local media. Oh, I'm Sherry. I'm a Malay Muslim transgender and a sex worker. And at the point of time, I didn't think about shit what would my parents think. I didn't think about it because I don't see that the issues is on them about how they raised me up or they fail to raise me up to be the son that they wish to be. But it's my choice. You see, I want to be, I choose to be a trans woman and now I'm a sex worker. But hey, I'm also an activist, I'm a human rights defender. So the limelight should be on me only. And it shouldn't be reflected on how bad my my parents' parenting skill was or even the value of my faith as a Muslim, Malay Muslim. No, it's not all of that, you see. And talking about embracing being yourself, I would like to say that only when you're sure, then you should be embracing and be yourself. Because until you're really sure that, oh, yes, I'm a trans woman. Oh, no, I'm actually a, a, a gay, but I love to uh, cross-dress and that means I'm a drag queen. So once you really know the, the gender identity, the sexual orientation, then you can be yourself. But until then, take your time to really know where do you fit in and, and how do you make you feel better. Just because, oh, there's a lot of fruit project race. Oh, okay, rush to become a drag queen. 
Oh, but then Sheriff doing this. Oh, then has to be a trans woman doing sex work. I don't want to be responsible for your quick decision. Take your time. There's no rush to it. You see, because the youth out there think that, oh, Sheriff's doing fine as a trans woman, as a sex worker. <laughs> Why not drop out of school, get into the sex industry, but still being alive like Sheriff? It's not as easy as that, my dear. And it's not as easy as putting pain on your face and then making money doing show. It's not as easy like that. You know, we all have our stories. We can be the, the motivation, but we are not the one that you all should be leading up to your life. We are not the one that you should be working towards onto. You have your own goals. You have your own dream. Chase up it. We are just here to help you along the way. It's a personal journey and no one can really tell you how to go about it. But we're so lucky right now that we have these people in the panel, people you know, all over the world coming out and at least giving us some tips, right? At least. At least. How about you, Ewan? Well, okay. I, I think I learned from Joshua what the importance of coming out. But before then, before that, um, I never thought coming out was really important because um, I'm so much more than bisexual. Um, and um, so... I, I, I want people to see me for my um, skills, for my talents, uh, for my character, instead of uh, how, I ended, how I identify. So I've never really given um, special importance to coming out um, until maybe recently, because I, um, I've been helping Martha and um, I, I've seen that there, there is a gap in society where someone, um, where where youth, um, there, there is a gap where um, people, the youth are hungry for knowledge. They want to know more about themselves. They feel a certain way and they want to have answers and they want to have role models. And um, that's, that was the, uh, how, um, only then did I think that maybe it was important to um, share what I felt, uh, how I felt. And so, but mine has been quite a slow transition. Um, previously, well, I didn't like burst out of the closet. Um, I, um, I respect that my, uh, some of the, um, my family members are staunch Christians. And so um, personally, I feel like um, they would really need to struggle um, to understand how I feel about myself and my sexuality. And I, I didn't want to put that on them. Um, having, I know at the end of the day, they would still accept me and love me for who I am, but they, because they have different beliefs, they would have to really, really struggle to understand it. Um, and I was also, I was always wondering whether it was necessary to put them through that turmoil. Um, and so that, that's mainly for um, um, my, uh, maybe my aunts and my parents, um, but for uh, amongst my friends, uh, I have been trying to uh, sort of come out in a, a slow way um, that is also in tandem with my own exploration. Um, so it's sort of like a gradual process. Maybe one, today I feel ready and then I will update the, um, my profile on Instagram to say that I'm bisexual. Um, and I've actually had pretty good responses. Uh, some of my friends who I thought might be a little traditional actually uh, send me private messages when they saw my story and, and, and they would try to be curious in a sensitive way, um, asking whether it's okay to uh, get to know more about my story, about me. And um, so actually I'm quite happy with the, with the responses I've gotten so far. Is uh, Singapore uh, a mostly religious country also? Um, the thing about Singapore is... is... Singapore is, a, Singapore is a peaceful, green, beautiful country. Everything is perfect. Yeah. No, no, I, 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 I don't say that in a sarcastic manner. That is the approach, right? When you want to create the perfect country where there is peace, you have to make sure there is peace. We need to ensure that we listen to each dominant sort of religion in the country and listen to what their laws are and what their beliefs are. And if all of them happen to say that homosexuality is wrong, then we're going to have to appease them, right? We're going to have to make sure that they don't debate over this because all their religions say it's a sin and that it's 
it's considered gross indecent. That's what they put in the section 377A, grossly indecent. So to appease all the religions, then the dominant ones, I guess, uh, you then have to keep that law there. And that's been the excuse. Every time we go in to try to repeal that law, it's Singapore's not ready yet. Uh, the general public is not accepting yet. Uh, the Christians are saying this, the Catholics are saying this, the Muslims are saying this, um, Hindus are saying this. Um, so it's it, we have, that's why you have things like when we do our pink dot, when we all wear our pink t-shirts, we have a white dot movement, <laughs> I don't know white dot, they wear white t-shirts to protest against the pink t-shirts. Um, so that's why you have things like that. It's because, so like on one hand, as much as I don't agree with it, I also understand why Singapore is what it is and why it's so hard. And I think uh, it's important for us to do that. Um, when you wanna, I believe that if you wanna fight the beast, you have to understand the beast that you're trying to fight. You need to understand what you're up against, how it moves, how it operates, why Singapore needs to do what it does. So with that. Yeah, um, I'm just hopping back to what you said earlier. Um, uh, yeah, I actually, the, the first time when I started thinking about coming out, um, it was, it's a really strange thing because you think coming out is going to be this very exhilarating feeling, but then it, I, I felt like I had to come up because it felt like I was like the water was reaching all the way here. Let me just turn off my WhatsApp. Um, it was like reaching all the way here and it was starting to, to choke me up a little bit and I had to come out. And I asked people who are gay and that was the, the thing that I kept hearing, which was you don't have to come out, it's nobody's business. Like what you do in your bedroom is nobody's business. And you hear that as well to responses to sort of sex positive conversations, being able to pull out, I guess, the sex toy that you just bought. All that was frowned upon like five, six years ago. Just being able to talk about that so publicly without shame and to embrace it like that, buy ads for it. Lily Allen just launched her new sex toy, you know, so stuff, stuff like that. That was so, so different before. So the thing that I kept hearing was that you should not be, um, you shouldn't come out actually, even as a gay person, just live your life. Don't invite trouble. And that's it. But you don't realize how much your experience will then shape someone else's. So now that I have come out, right, before I came out, my parents would have been against it in the sense where I would have known very, very clear if every person in Singapore was given like a little survey, like should we keep this law that criminalizes sex between men? If they didn't know their son was gay, they would have clicked, yeah, keep that law. Cause I don't know anyone like that. No one in my circles like that, right? But then you know that your son is gay. You know that your close family member, your best friend is gay because they came out to you and they told him, told you this. Would you really wanna keep a law that, that criminalizes how they love, which is the most purest form of human emotion, which is to love and express love and be able to hold someone's hand in public, kiss someone on the train or go on a date, be able to experience that with someone else you want me to call that grossly indecent for this person's life. I wouldn't want to do that. So, so yeah, coming out is extremely important. People don't realize that. I can empathize that it may take time to get to that point for sure, but we cannot downplay um, the importance of embracing your sexuality because no one's ever downplayed their heterosexuality. You know, no one's ever downplayed the fact that they want to have a girlfriend or a boyfriend and go on a date and they make out on trains. For some reason, they love making out on escalators, but they've, they've never had to deal with that, whereas we have. So, yeah. In a way, our actions affect other people more than we think. So I'm going to stop for a bit now and look at the questions from our audience members. And if um, some of our audience members would like to unmute to ask, please go ahead. Now is the time. Hmm. We have a question from V. Uh, to all panelists, do you recall any kind of responses received when coming out? I think, I think most of them already responded to this. And hmm, did you ever have to let anyone go in your life after coming out? Addressed to our panelists. Hmm. How about you, Star? Well, I think um, I don't have any recollection of someone I let go in my life. Um, on a personal level, I mean, not a close relative or friend. 
because I think I chose my my group of, group of people or the people I, I am with. Um, maybe for that question, for those I let I people let go are the, those who who didn't allow who who didn't accept me for who I am. So, but, but I don't consider them as friends or relatives anymore because there's no, I think there's no connection for us or there's no binding, um, binding law or something that we should be together. So I let go of those people who didn't accept me. So, and that's fine for me. Um, I rather have a small community or a small group of friends or family that accepts me for who I am, rather than I have a lot of acquaintances, but they don't really understand where I'm coming from. I mean, speaking more about um, the community, um, as Joshua and you and, and Sherry were talking about Singapore, don't, aren't you getting like a little bit envious of them? <laughs> I mean, our community is a bit... Uh, how can you explain our community over here? I hear what's like. Yeah, actually here, um, it's really, really hard. Yeah, like, like what I told before, um, growing up in a third world country, it's really, really hard. Um, there's lots of, um, it's like uh, um, we, uh, we grew up in a gossip culture since time, um, since the Spaniards um, invaded us. So it all started there. Um, people always treat you, if you're a minority, very differently and very low. And it takes a lot of um, courage and acceptance for you to be able to rise up to the occasion. And it's, and even in the in the LGBT community, um, here in the Philippines, um, if you're masculine, you're more prone to having a relationship or having um, best of um, best um, opportunities. But if you're feminine, you're weird. Um, as a gay person, you're not really recognized at all. And, and it's double, we're always having double standards regarding that. Because some people uh, would like to fight for our rights, fight for our that. But at the end of the day, um, they, feel, uh, they discriminate their fellow community because they're feminine, because they're weird, because they're different from the usual uh, part of the spectrum. So that's why it's important. That's why it's important that we have a plus in our LGBT community, LGBTQIA plus. It means that it's ever evolving. It's it's changing from time to time. So we're not bounded by in a certain box. I used to identify myself as gay only before, but this past few years, um, there's a term that. Uh, we use uh, the term non-binary. So I'm more identify now myself as a non-binary than just being gay. Because there's a thing that there's non-binary, but it doesn't have any term yet before. So I want, as growing up or, or as through the years, we'll get to experience a lot of things that it will differ or it will change you because of the situation, because of the environment. And I think that it will help you a lot to be able to live your life to the fullest. That's true. And I guess just as a, as a primer also for everyone in the audience, I mean, a piggyback piggyback writing of what Star said, gossip is God here in the Philippines. Um, I was very surprised to hear that in Singapore they had an actual law uh, against the uh, against gay men. In the Philippines, there are no laws. They don't even recognize us, right, Star? They don't, they don't yeah. even recognize us. We're not, um, 
actually up, up to until now um the soji bill yeah it's still on the up in the air um it discusses about everyone's social um sexual orientation gender identity and expression but we were um that bill is still suppressed because of um, religion beliefs or and or patriarchal um, patriarchal system here in the philippines and lack of education they think that giving rights uh, so Bill, the sexual orientation and gender identity and expression bill they think that for some reason it will empower um the lgbtqia plus community and it will take away power from heteronormative culture yes. it's so uh, uh, <laughs> it's so jesus you know it's so annoying everyone here whether you're straight or you're gay or whatsoever you have the sexual orientation gender identity and expression that people most of the people doesn't understand that and that's hard you can you keep we keep on fighting or we keep on explaining to them but they're they're they build up their walls because they felt that it's gonna be um diminishing their rights as a heterosexual person I guess in line with that, could um, could we perhaps share with our with our audience and with one another? You know, how can people get more educated about this community, and how can we be proper allies? How can we help properly? Un, do you have any ideas? Um, well, I think uh, the end goal of um, trying to come out or share in this sort of forum is uh, just to gather to gather more allies um, so as a minority the main issue is being oppressed um, and so um, really the goal here is uh, to increase uh, so of course minorities um, will naturally be oppressed by the majority so the main point of having allies is just so that we can increase the number of people who stand with us and um, by the sheer by sheer number of people, we are able to um, not uh, not be marginalized or oppressed. So I think um, the best thing that uh, people who I who have who are in heteronormative uh, relationships can do is really to um, stand with their friends who identify differently on the sexuality spectrum and say that um, these are our friends too, um, these are human beings too, and um, that we stand with them. I think it's very important that you said that we're human beings too, you know, and that honestly, we will never completely 200% understand one another. But what's important is, you know, we, we see that humanity within one another and that, you know, everyone deserves human rights, right? So Sherry, how about you? How can we help? Okay, uh, before that, I would like to go back about uh, the, the Soji Bill and also the gay, gay law and also about peaceful country. Yes, please. So I want to say that I believe that, that yes, it is a peaceful country, be it of uh, the, the presence or the absence of Soji Bill or the gay law, but this nightmare comes from the people surrounding because I believe anywhere in this country, anywhere, in any community, it can be peaceful, but the people surrounding it could be the nightmare, you see. If you know where to find peace, then peace shall be it, you see. So, yeah, I believe any country is peaceful to be just that. We might not be in the right place to feel peaceful. And as for tapping on what you were saying, uh, gather more allies and not to be oppressed and also stand in with them. When people ask me, uh, how can allies do their part or how can members of the public do their part, I will always say that it's a huge responsibility and I would only ask for if they are ready to do it, if they know how to answer questions when people are asking, hey, uh, example, Joanne, why are you supporting sex workers? You're not a sex worker yourself. Why? Or maybe you and you're a sex positive, but are you sure you want to support trans women doing sex work? This kind of question, see, if you are not ready to answer, if you don't know how to, perhaps you shouldn't be, be putting yourself in a difficult situation by saying, yes, I'm an ally of sex worker, I'm an ally of this or that. 
until you're fully prepared and then you're sure that you can answer those questions, then you should you could probably stand out proud, you see. But until then, I don't want you to be responsible or I don't want to put you in a situation where you are downfounded. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, it's true. But again, that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate uh, allies helps or get more allies because with them, then it will make, make more sense to why someone that is uh, a non-sex worker preaching about or even talking about uh, sex workers' issue and challenges because if I do myself, then it would be a selfish uh, selfish needs. You see, it would be a selfish purpose. Oh, because she is a sex worker herself. Of course, she's posting about it. But what if Joyan or Yuan or the star, even Joshua, who's non-sex worker, talking about sex worker issue, then it would trigger the, the question, how come they're sharing about it? So they want to know more. Hey, uh, Joyan, why are you talking about sex workers as you're not one? Then you can tell, oh, because why? I know, as a, I know of a friend in Singapore that's doing sex work. This isn't why I want to tell the world that this is the, the issues that she's uh, facing. And this means that uh, with allies out there, it doesn't mean that when you're talking about it, you're posting about it, it doesn't mean that you are encouraging it. It only means that you're supporting it. You see, I support the, the, the sex workers movement or drag queen or anything or sex positive. doesn't mean that, oh, I post it means I encourage youth to get into the sex work industry. Doesn't mean I post it, I encourage youth to become drag queens or sex sensitive without knowing more. You see, it's a difference between supporting and I can encouraging. And I think that's the most important thing that people should know when they want to be an ally and, and how to go about it. But nevertheless, to to finish my, my part here, I would say that the least anyone can do is to basically respect all this community and the people in it. You see, I'm not asking instant acceptance just by, by getting onto this panel with you all or by any event by Shukai and Spice. I'm asking that, you know, just give a little bit of respect. I know it's uncomfortable, but it's the little thing that you can do immediately without without causing any harm or even splitting with your, your money or anything. You see, respect is the simplest thing anyone can do. And then we can talk about acceptance after that. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, first respect and of course education. Education. Sorry, Joshua. Please go ahead. Sorry, no, no, it's okay. Um, how how can we how can we have good allies? Is that what what your your question is, right? How can we better yeah. have better allies? Better allies, and how can we help the community more? I think the first thing is show up. I think that's the very first step. The very first step is show up physically. When we have a ping dot, you add to the numbers. I don't need to know if you have it all figured out, if you understand the definitions of all these different alphabets. I don't need you to even know for yourself if you 100% stand with me or not. If you kind of feel like you stand with me already, first thing is show up. You add to the numbers. At the very least, like that person's photo. Because if you like that person's photo, even if you have nothing to say, if you have nothing to comment, you don't know what your stance is and all that shit, just liking that photo adds to the algorithm so these people, these people's posts can find people who know that they need these posts. Little things like that. Just following the ping dot page and just liking every post already does something. Helps the algorithm in a really messed up way. Adds to the numbers. Okay, that's the very first step, which is to show up. The second thing is don't wait for a saga to happen because right now we're living in sagas, right? We're living in when the popular thing is this, we discuss this. Uh, when something really horrendous happens and it makes, makes public news, we talk about it. Um, and I'm not saying these things don't matter. For sure they do. We should, we, I'm glad we're talking about it now. We also had many opportunities to talk, to talk about this before. Let's make sure every opportunity from here on we discuss it too for all aspects, not just with sexuality, with race, with religion, with, with uh, wages, uh, equal pay, you know, all these different areas, don't wait for the saga to come to exactly where you are uh, for, 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 for then to have people jump on. Um, the moment you hear something messed up happen around you, right next to you, call it out. Even in gaming, for example, the number of times today I was called the F word, um, uh, in, while gaming, just playing gaming today, I was called the N word while I was gaming. Just because I was playing Mortal Kombat, this person turned on the microphone and used the N word on me, just like that. Um, and and people say on gaming chats all the time, bro, that's so gay. All that they do it all the time. They use um, rape as a word. 
that they say they use that so casually and loosely and it's its own gaming lingo and I frustrated so many of my gaming pals because I've told them I don't feel comfortable with you using that word and even though bro I don't mean any harm it's our own gaming lingo it's little things like that that go a long way if you hear that locker room talk when you're in the army where it's mandatory for all Singaporean men and you hear this locker room talk we did an episode on the SG boys where we talked about our army experiences and we had a lot of people who who messaged us on Instagram saying that they don't even realize how much of that they went through because they're so used to just sweeping it under the rug when they hear things like don't drop the soap at the shower and next to this guy they just let it go over their head they have no choice but to live through that but if you actually think of how many times we've heard these things and my friend who says he's an ally doesn't say anything little things like that when you hear in day-to-day -day life step in call out these things that's it you don't have to know exactly how to answer every single question and and stand for the gay community is this um, just little things like that when messed up stuff happens jump in and say that's not right that's it that's the first step and then we'll all figure it out over time i think together where you fit where i fit everything that's true though it's the small things that really you know make up a culture ultimately and especially for for us again um where our culture is built on gossip built on words informal words these words can mean so much so much okay how about us star what do we do about the philippines <laughs> For me, it's really, really hard. Um, but I think the first step is that being visible. That's what I think uh, we can do, just to be visible and show your support. And um, it will take a long, 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 long time for us Filipinos to be able to accept or the, the other majority people to accept us. Because like what I said earlier, um, as long as people doesn't understand or they don't know what's going through on our mind and in our hearts, they feel threatened. So they, they, so they assume it that it's something of a bad, um, bad thing. It's more of, how can we be able to help or accept who we are if um, if we are not open or we're not really there to support? So being visible is, I think, one step. And more on education or um, being... Um, um in the public or public information public dissemination it will help it's a small step but like what it's um one small step can lead to to great you know it's like the russian i'm sorry the roman saying the the the, the city wasn't built in a day so it's gonna be a process so one first step that we can do is visibility and the information just keep it there um keep it open so it can help that's true so when you're from our side of the planet where nothing has been done before um our group is the first to do burlesque in the country um, drag is just um, rising up right here in the country Oh, it's been it's been here for a while, but now it's being um, more uh, accepted here in the country. Vogue, these subcultures, right? Kink, BDSM. It's a very small um, place. So just you know, by being, you know, simply being, and then as Joshua said, showing up, even virtually, you know, that already helps ultimately. Yeah. So I guess um, we're down to our last fifteen. 
minutes and I wanted to ask um, the panelists again um, one by one um, what is your maybe uh, do you have any questions this time for the audience or do you want to um, involve the audience before we end you and you're smiling <laughs> what's on your mind uh, no actually um can we can we skip me while i think about it oh yeah sure sure i just thought you had something to say that's why you were you were smiling that was a fun idea yeah, let's go put the audience on the hot seat. They've been really quiet. Yeah, how, how, how about you guys? How about you, Sherry? I see you're eagerly looking at the camera. <laughs> Come on, let's put them uh, on the hot seat. I don't know, uh, because I think recently I was, I was in the Beijing uh, panel, and then they were talking about equality. So, and then it makes me realize that I don't like to use the word vulnerable, but some people will look at us. At, on the community is vulnerable, but nevertheless, from that one, I wish that there will be more, it would change to, to something to be more visible, there's visibility, there's inclusivity, and there's equality. I think that's important from shifting vulnerability to being uh, a visible community, community that's being inclusive, and then equal, equality to rights, profession, expression, and anything like that. And yeah, while we here, Five of us here are trying to save today, save the world. Everyone can also do such, you know. It doesn't take only myself to save the world, save today. Everyone can do that. So if you know your strength, you know your power, you know your passion, you're already part of the superhero team. I'm going to put them on the spot by going off what Sherry said. So people from the audience, what's your superpower, huh? What superpower can you contribute to this um, rainbow community this time? And you can type your answers in the chat box or you can unmute at this point and um, what do you call this and, and say your answer. So we have one already from Dr. Martha herself bringing people together by you know producing this sugar and spice so guys keep attending this festival this festival is the first of its kind it's an asian sexuality festival made by asians for asians lord knows we need that <laughs> okay so uh, like what joshua said like what star said it's visible it's pretty visible and the the people who are here right now good job on showing up right there you go. Hi, very insightful. Vanessa, what's your superpower <laughs> that you can contribute to the community? And how about um, if Star and Joshua want to um, also put the audience on the, on the hot seat, please go ahead. Anytime. <laughs> we have around 10 minutes left, guys. Build your friendship like a spider web together, Elmer. I'd like to see that <laughs> personally. <laughs> like a spider web. Wonderful. <laughs> That's your superpower. Oh, cause because you're the IT guy. So it's like an inter spider web thing. <laughs> so everything is all connected virtually. So now that we are all so used to this virtual session, it's actually not difficult for each one of us to take a step to link up, take the friendship like how multi-level marketing works. You connect to one friend, but you expect your one friend connect to three more friends. And that's where you build a community from the start. And that's where you can build across um, across the country and uh, within the community, within a, a country itself. And now everything is all connected virtually. There's no reason why we need to meet up with each other physically. So building up virtually is actually priceless. It actually takes time. And with friendship around the world, you guys are good enough to cover it 24 hours zone. Yes, that's right. I, I like to mention that time zones now are a social construct because everyone is online. Everyone is supposedly at home, right? So we really have no excuse but to show up, really show up. Yeah, so let's read some more of the comments here. Um, advocacy, showing up, awareness. That's from Vanny. That's right. Awareness is very important. Awareness and education. 
turn up and reshare events there you go from fiona i'm gonna be expecting all of you guys and all of our events <laughs> okay and vanessa linked herself in the chat box in case you want to visit her okay now speaking of events and turning up and showing up guys so my beloved panelists is there um do you have a website or do you have any uh, maybe online or event in the future that we can show up in how about you joshua hey thank you um i think before we go into that can, can we all just celebrate how gorgeous joan looks right now she looks absolutely stunning and the star or as well you look gorgeous i love the bowie-esque look the whole time I'm like, how did you paint below the eyelids? Like, I don't know how you did that. Cause it's so seamless. There's like no crease whatsoever. It's just like, ooh. And then Sherry, you look absolutely stunning as my like, working model. And you and your, you're, you're so cute. Okay. Sorry, braces all around. Everyone looks cute. Um, if you enjoyed uh, some, of the, some of the things that I added to um, the, the panel today, I host a podcast with two other incredible men um, called the SG Boys. It's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Um, we have had um, some incredible celebrities that have jumped on as well. Uh, we had Melanie C from the Spice Girls on the podcast. We've had Love. We just had Conan Gray on the podcast. Uh, we've talked about loneliness. We've talked about relationships. We haven't talked about sex, which I know is quite surprising for a gay podcast. I know we have not talked about sex yet. So we will. Um, maybe we can have Joy on as well. Um, and uh, you can get also, if you just type, honestly, if you just type yeah, dsgboys.com, you'll be able to uh, link straight to the Spotify page. Thank you. Yeah, let's talk about sex. There you go. Bigger, stronger orgasms. Yeah, it's lovely. How about you, Star? My parents are in the next room, so I have to lower the volume. Oh, sorry. Sex! <laughs> <laughs> so hello guys um i'm trying this new thing to stream in an app in an application that um i do interior design also and i do drag and i do circus arts there i hope you could watch me i stream every morning um sg time around nine in the morning or in the evening uh, around 9 p.m. onwards, SG time also. And um, just follow me, the star or on Live It. Um, we have an event on March 30th. Um, it's uh, called the Pride of Live It. It's a competition um, who can be the ambassador of LGBT in Live It. So I hope you could uh, come and so show your support Holding thank you now. yeah we're taking attendance guys <laughs> kidding how about you Yuan? my shout out is of course for the sugar and spice festival <laughs> because i'm on the committee so please uh, like us on facebook or like us i mean uh, follow us on instagram so that you can get to know more about what's uh, coming up next yeah uh, of course, special thanks to Martha. Um, um, she's created this really great space where, I mean, I just felt comfortable the first day I, I joined the Zoom, um, the first ever presentation uh, from the previous festival because she was just so open uh, and, and it, it was just refreshing to see some, someone talk about sex. Um, just like mentioning what she had for dinner last night. So um, so I really appreciate that this platform exists and I, I really love it here. So, so please, please support us. Thank you. We should just all talk about sex as if it were dinner last night. It's a perfectly human thing, guys. Okay, how about Sherry? Please invite us. Yes, thank you. I uh, For me, I do... I believe I've been doing many, 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 many things and I would like to do even more than this. You see, I would like to do more than just reaching out to sex workers to be on local media. I mean, I've, yeah, and beyond, you see, because I also am part of the regional representatives. So I want to do more. So if 
anything and anywhere that I can fit in, please let me know. I would love to collaborate with any one of you here or even the audience. But even if not, then if anyone is interested in this uh, mask that I designed, it's a Project X and then there's two design. Uh, yeah, there's two design here. So if anyone wants to order this, it's going for $12. And yeah, this is my baby project where I'm very, very much attached to it because uh, it was for the International Women's Day or Sex Focus Day. And given the pandemic we are in, what's the best way to make money for your organization by not creating a mask? Designing one, designed by Sex Worker for allies, for the community, given that everyone sees the news mask nowadays, right? So, such a brilliant idea, isn't it? So, yes. If you want to order, it's available for travel. I can do, I can sell locally or globally. And otherwise, I'm here for you all if you want to collaborate on podcasts. I wish I can be a performer like you, Joyan, and the star all, but I can't. But I'll try. I'll see whatever I can fit in future to continue working with all of you here because it's been a great time. Sherry, where can we get the masks on, on Project X, the website? Well, I can send to you the link in the chat box and also, okay. yeah, be on it. Right. Let's do that. There you go. So, um, yeah. Sorry, can everyone put their little Instagrams on their um, com on the messages as well, just so that we can keep in touch? So, like, little things like, uh, sorry, just sorry to... Yeah, no, 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 let's do that. Um, I, I think it's very important for us to collaborate um, now more than ever, right? Uh, but especially to help amplify what each other, what, what we're doing. So little things like what Cherry is doing with her face mask, like I would love to help. Uh, and, and we'll figure out how we can as well help support that. Um, so little things like that, amplifying each other's voices. So just put your Instagram down there if you're cool with us following you, uh, just so that we can also like holler out whatever you do. Let's do it, guys. This is one step to becoming more united, which is what the panel is about, ultimately. I just right? want one more follower. That's it. Yeah. yeah. But I'm always um, shadow banned, but I hope it's there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. So if anyone else from the audience wants to wants to follow as well, please drop your um your IG or your FB in the chat box. And I think that's pretty much it for the GLBTIQIA plus XYZ panel for Sugar and Spice this March. And we have a lot more workshops a lot more panels a lot more sex basically <laughs> coming up um in the next few days in the next few uh, months we also have angels of eros coming up um next month where it's basically more aspects of of sex and teasing and relationships and sensuality um which is what uh, the Asia might need more of <laughs> now there you go it's right there in the in the chat box for everyone to see um, yeah we'd love to collaborate and support one another so everyone con connect with everyone um, the internet is here we have no more excuse you know we could just show up with our phones nowadays and it's gonna mean the world to some people to us okay so I hope everyone learned a thing or two with this panel and I hope you guys have a good evening. Shall we take a picture? Let's take a picture. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to take a picture now. Okay. Ready. Ready. One, two, three. It's just the panelists, okay, guys? So I'm not taking a picture of, of anyone else. Okay. All right. I'm allowed to do that, right? Oh, Martha, wait, hold on. One, two, three. Only if, well, I don't know, are you allowed to spotlight people who want to be part of the picture? What, what, are, the, what are the rules? <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to um, violate anyone's consent. If you want to be in the photo, you turn on your video. Okay, there you go. There you go. If you want to be, if you want to be in the photo, Okay, if you don't want, um, I don't know what to do. <laughs> they, they can just hide their video if they, if they don't want to be part of the photo. Okay, there you go. Am I going to take it? Okay, I'm I'll making take. my Asian eyes bigger. Oh, okay. One, two, three. 
I got it. One last, one last. You know, Asians, we love, we love photos. Okay, one last. One, two, three. Thank you guys. You have been amazing. You have been amazing. And I hope that this sort of, you know, helps us learn more about one another. Become more human. Okay. Good night, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne, and all the panelists for today's session. It's been awesome and quite insightful for me. Uh, and thank you uh, to Mata for organizing this festival. Uh, tomorrow's event, uh, tomorrow's session will be Living the Dream, Fantasy versus Reality, the BDSM Lifestyle by Karen Evers Fu. That's at 7 p.m. Uh, Singapore time. And Sexual Age Sharing by Dr. Martha Tara Lee. And all the sex toys. Cool. All right. Thank you all. There's huddle time, chit chat, chit chat for the next half hour or so. So thanks for joining. <laughs>